Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this video adrenaline tip for Creative Cow. Today, I'm going to show you how you can combine Photoshop and After Effects to make your own custom backdrops without a lot of work. We're just going to use some simple gradients, a couple of keyframes, blending modes, and a cool effect called Colorama, and instantly we'll have a backdrop. Here's how. So in Photoshop, you're just going to whip up a couple of quick gradients. It's up to you how big they are. I usually recommend going a bit larger than you need. In this case, I'm going to make a standard definition DVD, so I've gone a little bit bigger than the size that I actually need. With the gradient tool selected, you can go ahead and drag to create your own gradients. You've got different options in here. If you don't want to do any of those, you can actually use filters. You'll find a variety of things under the render menu, like clouds or lens flares that you can use or any of the other brush strokes or distortion, it's really up to you. Let's go ahead and just save that. And we're going to switch on over to After Effects. And I'm going to import the folder with some of these textures already made. Here we go. And we'll just step in there, grab a bunch of these. We're not going to bring them in as a sequence. I'm just pulling them in to use. I'll hit Open, and they all come in. Now these are just a variety of textures that I've built up through the years and we're going to work with these very quickly to build a new backdrop. So let's just make a comp, that's the size and duration we want. In this case I'm going to do NTSC DV widescreen. This is for a DVD menu. There we go. And I want that menu to be 30 seconds long. So I'm actually going to make this a little bit longer to start. I'm going to show you a little trick. We'll go 36 seconds to start. And I'll click OK. Looks good. Grab our layers and just drop them in. Now I don't know which ones I'm going to use yet, but it's very quick to audition and decide. So we'll just sort of start down here at the bottom with the very first layer. There we go. And I've got this black to white gradient. I'm going to go ahead and use scale and anchor point to animate that. S for scale, shift A to add the anchor point property and I could just adjust this. I'll say, you know what, start a little bit over here to the right and sort of down here in the darkness and then at the end go ahead and uh, pan across and sort of go here and also blow it up a little bit. That's fine. If we RAM preview that, you see we have a simple sort of sweeping light right now. You might be saying it doesn't look like a sweeping light, but it does. It's just a tonal variation. And as we start to combine these, it's going to create the feeling of light and movement. So let's go to our next layer here, and we'll turn it on. And that's pretty simple, so I'm just going to get rid of that one. We'll try the next. That looks good. S for scale, A for anchor point. We're going to scale that up a little. And we'll just come here to the beginning, turn on our stopwatches, and adjust that. This is just a little gentle cloud texture. And at the end here, it's going to scale up a bit and move across. There we go. And if we preview that, you'll see that it starts to just float on by. What we want to do now, though, is change the blending mode. So I select the layer and press Shift Plus. And in doing so, I could step through the different blending modes and combine them. I'm going to go with one of the darker ones here, like Multiply. And as I hit Play here, you'll see that the two layers are interacting. We're getting sort of a cloud movement while this light streak sort of floats on through. And we just keep playing with more and more layers, combining them. Finding layers that we like the texture or the gradients, and mixing them together to get more of a feel. If at any time it's not strong enough, you can press Command E for Edit Original and that'll open it up. If it was created in Photoshop, it'll go there. If it opens up another app, no big deal. Just go ahead and instead right-click on the file and choose to reveal that in the project. You could then reveal it in the Finder. So let's just drag that on Photoshop and we'll put a little bit more texture in here. Filter Stylize. We're going to do a little bit of extrusion. And we'll just blur that out a little bit. I 
There we go, got a little more texture. Grab my gradient tool here, and on a new layer, I'm just gonna put a little gradient and blend that. There we go. Flatten it, close it, save it, switch on back to After Effects, and you will see that it updates. Now, for some reason, it never refreshes because you didn't use the Edit Original. It's a piece of cake. Just right-click and choose to reload it, and you see that it will quickly fix itself. So there we go. Let's just keyframe that, scale, anchor point. Jump on down here to the end. Slide that on through a little. And we'll just drag to make sure everything's moving right. That looks good. Shift plus to change the blending modes and start to mix those layers together. And as you play, you'll see you get different results. So now we have a simple sort of flowing backdrop with a little bit of energy, a little bit of particle texture and light going through. And all I'm gonna do is take that and add some color. Piece of cake. Let's just go ahead here. And I'm actually going to do a little tweak here. I'm going to remove the scale and just use anchor points. So the bars slide through, but don't actually change their vertical position. I like that. It feels a little more mechanical. And we're going to go ahead and colorize that now. Add a new adjustment layer. Good. Come on over to the effects and presets and type in Colorama, which is a colorization gradient map has the world's worst preset, but we can quickly fix this. Go to Output Cycle, and you'll see some different palettes. I'm a big fan of sort of starting off with Fire there, or you'll find some other nice ones here, like Ramp Red or Ramp Blue, which are a little bit more gentle. And remember, these can go ahead and be blended as well to create the effect. And if at any point you can always toss in a new adjustment layer below that, and use your curves adjustment or levels adjustment to create a little bit of a gentle blend. Let's just do curves. And I'll open up the midtones there a little bit and pull down the highlights. And you see how that quickly lets us adjust the contrast. So now as we watch that, you see that we get our subtle sense of movement. We have our texture flowing through. It's working well and we've whipped up a background without a lot of work. Remember, you can always change and blend. You want a little more subtlety there, so the texture's coming through. And it's a simple way to make your own backdrops. If you want them to loop, not a problem. Quick nest and a little bit of trimming, and you're there. I'll just go ahead and select all my layers here and choose Pre-Compose. We'll call that Background Pre-Comp. And I'm gonna go ahead and shorten the composition here to 30 seconds come to the middle and we'll split this. So there's our loop point. Come to the beginning here, left bracket, moves it on down, go to the last frame, select this, right bracket, moves it on down. And now just a little tiny opacity dissolve there. We'll take that down to zero and come over here, set that back to 100 and we put a little dissolve there right in the middle to hide the loop point. And I'll just punch this up a little bit more, layer new, adjustment layer. And I'm gonna to toss on a couple of blurs. Let's just go with the radial fast blur. And we'll pull that out a bit and tell it to only blur the dark areas and set that to multiply. So now we get a nice richness of the color with a little bit of a light effect. You see there a simple looping background. You can experiment with different textures on your own. I went for subtle here, nice gentle backdrop for a DVD menu, not too busy. But the more texture you have in those layers, the more photographs you mix in and start to scale and blend, the more you can create your own looping textures with just the gradient tool or a couple of stock photos. For Creative Kyle, my name is Rich Harrington. Hope you enjoyed this technique. Be sure to check out more podcasts over at creativecow.net as well as the Creative Cow magazine. Thanks again.